Family Theater presents Walter Brennan and Don McNeil. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Torkelson's Flying Circus, starring Walter Brennan. And now, here is your host, Don McNeil. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Torkelson's Flying Circus, starring Walter Brennan as A.J. Torkelson. Oh, good evening. My name is Howard Peterson. I have an appointment with Mr. A.J. Torkelson. Oh, you're from the Internal Revenue people, huh? Yes. Matter of fact, I'm A.J. Torkelson. Come on in, Howie. Uh, how's that, Mr. Torkelson? Uh, just call me A.J. Everybody does. Come on in, Howie. We're letting all the heat out. Well, thank you. So I owe Uncle Sam a little cash, do I? Well, more than a little, I'm afraid. Actually, Mr. Torkelson... Uh, uh, A.J. Well, actually, A.J., you're what we down at the office call a very good taxpayer, but there's that little matter of the first Humboldt Skymaster. Well, let's go into the library and talk about it over some hot java. You look like you could stand something warm. Oh, yeah, indeed I could. It's a pretty nippy night out. Uh, it's not good flying weather. Hope you didn't have to take the bus. I could have sent a car for you. Oh, that's perfectly all right. Say, this is quite a magnificent house you have here, uh, A.J. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. You know... If anybody just tell me three or four years ago I'd be living in a mansion like this, I... this is the library, I think. I don't really spend too much time at home, and uh, let me see. I left that coffee pot by the fireplace. Uh, which way do you suppose... Oh, there it is over there. Howie, why don't you drop your overcoat over the chair there, and I'll pour us a little java. Oh, thank you. Uh, down at the department, we were a little unsure whether you fell under capital gains or the gift tax. Yeah. One lump or two? Oh, two, please. I take five myself. Cream? Uh, thank you. Hey, yeah. Sit down. Take a load off your feet, my boy. Thank you. Now, uh, what's this about capital gains? Well, Mr. Torkelson... Uh, please, uh, A.J. <laughs> All right, A.J. The gist of the matter is this. How did you come into possession of the property in question? Uh, the first Humboldt Skymaster, you mean? That's right. Now, now did you earn the airplane... Or was it a gift? Well, now, Howie, that's sort of a difficult question to answer. You see, I really didn't earn it, but then you couldn't really call it a gift either. Say, you in a hurry? No, no, not at all. Yeah, then I'd better tell you how I got it, Howie. Kind of let you figure it out, huh? All right. Well, let me see. It all started when I was what you might call a knight of the open road, a wandering diplomat without portfolio, a dweller in the great outdoors. In short, Howie, a bum. I was one of those unfortunates whose door had never felt the knock of opportunity. That is, until two years ago at the start of the baseball season. You see, I'd been sleeping at the Hollywood ballpark and they started playing night baseball, leaving me somewhat at odds for a place to sleep. So using an old strategy, I figured I'd hold up one of the all-night theaters on Sunset Boulevard. But I scouted around for a long cigarette butt, and then I found myself a theater with a nice, quiet feature. But when the break came, the people poured out for an intermission smoke, and I just lit up and sort of sidled in with them, looking kind of bored as if I'd seen one of the pictures and hadn't liked it much. Three minutes later, I was inside. Well, it was at the next intermission that I found it lying on the floor near my seat. It was a planned employee's badge from the Humboldt Aircraft Company. Kind of a pretty little thing, all orange and red and blue, with a big brass safety pin to hold it on. And I was just about to take it apart so that I might save the pin against some future need when, when I saw the lettering on the back of the badge. 
It said, a reward will be given for the return of this badge. Present or mail to Humboldt Aircraft Company at Playa del Rey or to any of their branch offices. Next morning, I called in person at the Playa del Rey plant. Yes, well, that's all very well and good, Mr. Torkelson, but we've not used that particular type of identification badge at our plant since the end of World War II. Hey, say, I'd appreciate it if you just call me A.J. Everybody does. Well, be that as it may, we simply cannot give you a reward. Well, the promise is on the bank. But we don't have money appropriated for that purpose. Do, do you know the red tape that would be involved, Mr. Torkelson? A.J. A.J., as it were. But nonetheless, it simply cannot be done. Uh, Mr. Higgins. Yes? May I have a word with you, sir? Oh, yes, of course, right there. Will you excuse us, Mr. Um, A.J.? Uh, sure. <laughs> what is it, Miss Smith? It's not so loud. <clears throat> what, what, what is it? We want to amount to something in this organization, don't we? Well, what are you getting at? I can see it in print now. Tramp Sue's Humboldt Aircraft. Sue's? Not so loud. Oh, yes, I, I forgot myself. But surely you don't think he'd sue that old... Stranger things have happened, and if he does, <laughs> he's got a case. Oh, what can I do? I, I don't know why they pass the buck to the sales department anyway. Well, maybe they think you should give him a nice, shiny new aeroplane. After all, the fine print says reward. Doesn't say money, so uh, why don't you give him an aeroplane? Are you out of your mind? Shh. I mean, are you out of your mind? I'll look at it this way. No, no, come over by the window here. Why not give him that? Give him... Give him that? Mm-hmm. But that's the new Humboldt Skymaster. Well, only give it to him with a string attached. The stipulation that he has to move it off our field by midnight. Oh, but now, I... Now, listen, I... listen. It takes six people to start that thing and three to fly it. You couldn't afford enough gasoline to turn those engines over if you sold your house, your car, your wife, and kids. And he hasn't got anything to sell. Yes, but the upper echelon people... They'll they... love it. They'll love it. Think of the publicity angle. Why, you think the public relations office won't go for a thing like this? Humboldt Aircraft rewards honest bum by making him king for a day. Rewards honest be king? It, it, it wouldn't be cruel, would it? Cruel? Giving him something to talk about the rest of his life? And think of how it'll sound around the plant. What, what do you mean? Oh, when they hear that old stuffy Higgins... Miss Smith, has... I've told you I deplore that absurd nickname. They won't be using it anymore when they hear about this. No? Mm-mm. Now, they'll noise it around. The clever gag Higgins pulled. Why, your name will be heard all the way to the top. And when they hear it, <laughs> they'll be smiling. <laughs> mm. Do you think so? Well, I'm sure of it. Mm. Say no more. I'll do it. And, Miss Smith, I mm. promise you, no matter how far up I go, I won't have any other secretary. Wherever I go, you'll go with me. <laughs> oh, um, Mr. Torkels, I mean MJ. AJ. Uh, yes, AJ. I, I wonder if you'd mind stepping over here to the window for a minute. Yes, sir. AJ, Humboldt Aircraft, as a mark of gratitude for your honesty and sense of duty, is going to present you with a rather special kind of reward. Oh, that sounds very nice. Yes, a beautiful new airplane, the Humboldt Skymaster. Oh, I don't know, Higgy, you know, that sounds very nice, but couldn't I just have the money instead? I, I haven't flown for a long time. Haven't flown for, for, for a long time? Uh, Jenny's in spads. First World War, you know. Oh, <laughs> yes, of course. I did quite a bit then, though. I was good till they started putting those new Liberty engines in them, and they got a, a mite too complicated. <laughs> Complicated? You think they were complicated? <laughs> Miss Smith, I hope you're taking this down. Uh, but you know, it might be nice to have a little runabout, rent it out and make myself a couple of bucks. Oh, this is a little more than a runabout. Now, if you'll just direct your attention toward the window yonder... It's... It started off as a kind of a rich feeling. I showed the transfer of title to the guards and then I... Walked around in the grounds looking up at my plane. That is about all I could do, too, just look. I got a mechanic to give me a boost, and I did manage to climb up on top of one of the wheels. And from there, I could almost touch the wing, <laughs> but not quite. Oh, I was certainly impressed with the size and the beauty of it, all shiny and silver. It was a lollapalooza, all right. But you know, I guess I didn't really hit me how I'd been bamboozled till I got over to the other side of the field. 
Then just as I was about to go into the airport cafe and I turned and looked again and wondered how I could move all those tons of airplanes. Hi. Something for you? Uh, uh, yeah, I wonder if you'd give me just a, a, just a cup of hot water. Hot water? You know, to, to warm the insides. Oh. What's the matter, old timer? Are you broke? Oh, no, no. I won't be broke again until midnight, but just a little short of ready cash, you might see. Hey, look. I'll stake you to a cup of coffee. Well, that's mighty kind of you. Uh, I think nothing of it. Uh, <laughs> thanks. I don't suppose you'd give me the cup of hot water, too. You you want the hot water, too? Don't do it, Lily. Oh, hi, Dave. Hey, things any better? Ah, uh, worse, if anything. Ah, uh, it's real tough, Dave. Yeah, life is a thorn. Say... Why shouldn't I give this guy here some hot water if he wants it? Why? Yeah. Yeah, because if you do, he'll add a little ketchup, cream, sugar, salt, and pepper, and everything else on the counter to make about the worst kind of soup you ever tasted. Oh, <laughs> no kidding, huh? Hey, would you have done that, huh? Well, it's really not so bad when you get used to it. Mm. Look, Millie, uh, mm. uh, make it bacon and eggs for two instead, huh? All right. Say, that's certainly nice of you. Yeah, he's a very sweet guy, this one. Uh, how do you want your eggs? Uh, 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 sunny side up. Good enough. Hey, and look, if you're around, drop in for lunch. Uh, I'd like to see about that, you know, everything soup for yours. Two bacon in, over and up, Roger and out. You sound like you've been on the bum yourself. <laughs> well, I've, I've seen some hard times, and from the looks of things, <laughs> I'm going to be seeing them again real soon. Why, in some sort of trouble? If there's anything I can do... No, 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 no. <laughs> afraid not. Not much anybody can do. That is, unless you'd like to buy 16,000 pounds of lemons. Lemons? Mm-hmm. You ever hear of Donner Air Freight? Mm, no, can't say as I have. No, well, uh, Donner Air Freight consists of, let's see, uh, one C-47, a few employees who will soon be looking for work, and, uh, and me. I'm Dave Donner. <laughs> A.J. Tarkelson. <laughs> nice to meet you, A.J. Uh, what's this about the lemons? Well, yeah, I bought them to transport east. Today, the CAB grounded my airplane. Now, why do they do a thing like that? Maybe you could talk to them. Nah, ain't that easy. You see, I'm 30 hours overdue for my 1,000 hours. I flew during the war. You flew during the war? Yeah, Spads and Jennies, in the de Havilland once. Oh, oh, that war. But I'm a little behind the times. See, what is this 1,000-hour business? Yeah, well, it's a very wise rule of the Civil Aeronautics Board. When a plane has flown a thousand hours, you must have it taken apart, overhauled, and put back together again to make sure that, well, that everything's in top shape. Oh, I see. Well, I can't fly my plane till it gets overhauled, which I can't afford, which means I can't move the lemons before they turn green again, which means, well, I'm not only going broke, but in debt. Well, Dave, my boy, seems we're both stuck with the same kind of trouble. You mean both on the bum? Well, that's about it, I guess. No, no, I mean, we both have airplanes, we... Can't move only for... What's wrong? And something just occurred to me, David, my boy. A way out of the dilemma. A way out? Dave, all you really need to move your lemons is another airplane. Is that right? Well, yeah. Well, suppose a guy came along who owned an airplane like, uh, say, uh, Humboldt Skymaster. Humboldt Skymaster? Oh. And supposing pigs had wings. I fly them out by pig, huh? No, 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 no. I'm serious. Could you fly a Skymaster? Well, I, I suppose I could. Now, if a fella came along and offered you such an airplane, would you accept it as worth, uh, say, uh, a partnership in your company? <laughs> sure. Say, what are you getting at? And would you let him uh, change the name of the company to suit himself? <laughs> well, anything, but I don't... My boy, you'll be good enough to read these papers. Huh? One's a transfer of title, and I don't quite understand the others. But if you read them, I think we might take a... and talk a little business. Business? I think we'll call our new company Torkelson's Flying Circus. Torkelson's Flying Circus? Torkelson's Flying Circus. Torkelson's Flying Circus? Yeah, they're painting it on the side now. And there's a fuel truck, and a starting crew, and millions and millions of lemons. Lemons? They were loading them. Oh, but this is unthinkable. <laughs> Miss Smith, you assured me... Oh, don't me... blame me. After all, I'm only a secretary. I don't make the decisions around here, you You know. tricked me into this. Uh, That's what you did, yes. This is the epitome of chicanery, Miss Smith. And I'll not soon forget it. Torkelson's Flying Circus. Oh, dear. 
<laughs> where, where, where's my hat? Where are you going? Straight to the top, if I must. But first, I'm going to bear my soul to the legal department. There must be a way out of this. <laughs> Loading coming along all right, Dave? Oh, hey, Jay, we got more space than we know what to do with. Well, look, I- I'd send out for more citrus if I thought we could, well, we could be sure of a market. Well, as a matter of fact, Dave, my boy, I want to discuss that very thing with you. Now, we'd stand to save a little on gas if we only went as far as, say, uh, Minneapolis. We'd save a lot. Well, look, I was in Minneapolis, St. Paul area a couple of weeks ago. Uh-huh. Those poor people need citrus fruit. They're having a lot of colds there at this time of the year. Well, what are you getting at, H.R.? Well, I thought we just might try to do those people a favor. I mean, as a long favor? as we got... Well, you know how citrus juices are good for colds, and, and the prices for things like that just seem to go clear out of reach at this time of the year back there. Hey, Jay, I'm beginning to think you've got a head for business. Oh, no, I was just thinking. I was thinking if we made a few more available, it might lower the price a little, and, you know, they're pretty good people. Hey, it looks like we've got company. Oh, uh, Mr. Tarkleton. Uh, correction. You've got company. Hi, Higgy. That's Higgins, the fellow that gave me the plane. No kidding. Mr. Tarkleton, I, 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 I simply must have a word uh, with Higgy, you. Higgy, I'd like you to meet my partner here, Dave. How are you? Partner? Oh, good grief. Mr. Tarkleton, I'm afraid a terrible mistake has been made. A mistake? Gee, Higgy, I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, yes, you see, I, I, I wasn't supposed to give you this aircraft. No, in fact, right after you left, we discovered that there was an appropriation for rewards after all. Yes. So, so you see, it was all a silly mistake. Now, now look here. Uh, here, here's a, a little check which should cover your trouble nicely. And if you just let me have the transfer of title for the play... I'm really very sorry, Higgy, but I, I'm afraid it's too late. Too late? Uh, then, Higgy, you wouldn't want to be an Indian giver, would you? Indian giver? Yeah. Uh, back in the old days, Mr. Higgins, the tribes of Indians used to give horses to each other and then steal them back at the first opportunity. You're not trying to steal this airplane back, are you? Steal? Steal? J. Albert Higgins? Oh, heavens uh, forbid. Jay, how could you suggest such a thing? <laughs> I come by it naturally, A.J. Well, let's see, we, we've about finished loading, so if you two gentlemen will excuse me, I, I'd better start tending the business. Uh, nice meeting you, Mr. Higgins. Yeah. Be with you in a minute, Dave. Oh, this is all a nightmare. <laughs> uh, Mr. Torkelson... Uh, A.J. Uh, yes, all right, then, A.J. You simply must give this airplane back. Oh, gee, Higgy, old boy. Oh, I'll be ruined. Budding young career, wife and six small children. Six? Well, two. That is, once in a while, the wife and I take care of my sister's boy. Mr. Torkelson, I appeal to your sense of fair play. This great, big, huge airplane, this this master of the skies, as it were, for a silly little bag. I wish I could help you, Higgy. You know, if it was just me, well, that'd be one thing. But now I've got a partner to think about. I wouldn't want to ruin him, you know. Have you signed anything yet? No, but I've given him my word. Well, I I meant... And then, too, Higgy, there's something else. You see, I'm one of those people who've never heard the knock of opportunity. Oh, well, that's all very well and good as it were, but... but... Of course, I ain't never had a door for her to knock on either. Higgy, I always thought secretly, of course, that if I ever did have something to get my teeth into, I... that I'd make a go of it. You know what I mean? Come on, A.J., gonna fire her up. Uh, be right along. A.J., you simply have to try to appreciate my position in all this. You see, in the first place, I... How's that, Higgy? I say, you'll, you'll have to appreciate my position in all this. I've already talked to the legal department. The, the, the legal department, that is. And they're talking about giving my job to my secretary. If that happens to me in the legal department... How's that again, Higgy? I say, if that happens to me in the legal department... Well, what'll happen to me when I talk to the vice president or, or Humboldt himself? I'll be ruined. Oh, well, gotta be running along now, Higgy. Things begin to look bad for you. Just let me know. Maybe we can work something out. Be good, Higgy. Don't take any wooden bats. No, but I can... AJ! Things went pretty well. It was kind of a, well, you might say, strong, proud feeling flying through the air. I remember thinking it must be about the same feeling Von Ribbentrop had when he was flying in the middle of a, a circle of forkers that was just flying circus in the first world. 
Did I ever tell you, Dave, I used to fly Spads and Jennies? Yeah, you told me, AJ. I suppose once you learn, you never forget. Hmm? hmm? Like, like swimming, I mean. Oh. Huh. Well, it's not much like a Spad, AJ. You, you want to try it? Oh, no. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> Take the wheel. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, just for a while. Just to sped you a little, huh? That's it. That's right. Just hold on to the wheel. Ooh, that's too far forward, AJ. No, 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 now too far back. D Dave, my boy, there seems to be something wrong with the controls over on this side. Maybe you better take it. Uh, uh, <laughs> the newness of the ship, I suppose, huh? Yeah, uh, no doubt. It'll work itself out. Uh, with practice, huh? I hope so. Uh, let's see. Not too far out now. I think I'll call the tower and see if they'll clear us for a straight approach. Minneapolis Tower, this is Torkelson's Flying Circus, over. This is Minneapolis Tower. Did you say Torkelson's Flying Circus? Please identify, over. I said Torkelson's Flying Circus, Humboldt Skymaster 488 Flight 1, a commercial freight line with a cargo of lemons, over. A cargo of lemons on the Humboldt Skymaster? Higgins thought it was a little out of order, too. Minneapolis, we request landing instructions and clearance for a straight approach. We'll clear you. This we gotta see. Call approaching final, runway 21, wind southwest 17, altimeter setting 040, over. Roger and out. See, AJ? Just like shooting fish in a barrel. AJ, I take my hat off to you. Uh, I suppose we were a little lucky. <laughs> Well, now I'm going to go into town, pick up our profits, and make hotel reservations for oh, us. Oh, I wouldn't do that, Dave. Hmm? I, I mean about the hotel. Well, why not? We'll have to stay for a while to scout up another load. Yeah, but as a matter of fact, while you were unloading the lemons, I took myself a walk down to the railroad yards, ran huh? into an old friend, a fellow knight of the road, you might say, and this fellow told me where I could get some wild rice for, well, f next to nothing. Wild rice? About 26,000 pounds of it, he said. Hmm. And I seem to remember that the people in and around New Orleans are awful fond of wild rice. And what with the cost of it being so high, I thought maybe we could, well, we could do those fine people a favor by making a little more of it available to them. I mean, what with the Mardi Gras coming up and all. Dave, New Orleans is a fine town. I'd sure like to stay here a couple of days, but I happened to run into Way Car Willie on Front Street, and he kind of steered me into a deal. You see, the shrimp fleet had what you might call a, an overcatch. And those fishermen are nice people, and right now they're what you might call shrimp rich and storage space poor. And since nearly everybody in the country likes New Orleans shrimp, well, I kind of thought that... Uh, <laughs> went pretty much that way all over the country. Of course, just about every place we put down, we got calls from the Humboldt people. They had their lawyers call us. And later on, vice presidents. And finally, old Alexander Humboldt himself. But after a while, they stopped. Seemed about every airline in the country was ordering Skymasters from them on the strength of how well we'd been doing. They couldn't build them fast enough. In fact, we had three on order for the last year. Well, that sounds like you've done a lot of expanding, A.J. Uh, we certainly have, Howie. I got a staff of old friends, <laughs> fellow knights of the open road, doing my dispatching and acting as buyers. Got 19 planes and 51 pilots besides Dave and myself. You know, I used to fly Spads and Jennies uh, back when... Yeah? Oh, oh, come on in, Hickey. Dave called from Burbank, AJ. He says the weather's clearing. Well, I guess it's back to work then. Oh, Hickey, this is Howie. Howie, Hickey. Howdy, Howie. Uh, oh, howdy do. Say, didn't you work for Humboldt Aircraft? Oh, them. Uh, Hickey's head of our public relations department. Well, boys, I've got a flight to make. Drop in any time, Howie. Now, where the... I suppose I put my helmet and guns. Uh, but, Mr. Uh, or uh, A.J., I still don't know about the first plane. How to tax you? Oh, you took and hash it out. Higgy, you write your check. Right, A.J. Uh, take good care of them, Higgy. Nice folks, those internal revenue people. This 
This is Don McNeil again. You know, we who appear on Family Theater usually refer to this part of the program as the commercial. And just for once, uh, with your indulgence, I'd like to treat it like a commercial. You know, the kind you're used to hearing on your radio or seeing on your television screens. Now, the advertising agencies have found that endorsements are effective selling devices, especially endorsements by prominent people who count themselves among the satisfied users. Well, Family Theater's produce has a corner on the satisfied user's market. And we can take our endorsements from any period of history. Noah, Isaiah, Aaron, Moses, St. Peter and Paul all use the produce that we offer. You might say uh, religiously. And we're more than satisfied with the results. Christopher Columbus, William Penn, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Robert E. Lee, countless others in American history were all quite outspoken regarding the merits of the frequent use of our commodity. And today, it's in use in practically every home in the world. Now, the product, of course, is prayer. And it is a product. It's the product of our minds and our wills. It's simply the way we have of thanking God for the things that he's given us and asking him for the things we need. But uh, Family Theater is not selling the product. Its benefits are free to everyone. And this program is on the air just to remind you of the benefits of prayer and to encourage you when you pray to pray together as a family. The reason? Well, there are two, both in slogan form. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Torkelson's Flying Circus, starring Walter Brennan. Don McNeil was your host. Others in our cast were Gigi Pearson, Jay Novello, John Larch, and Howard Culver. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan, with music composed and conducted by Henry Mancini. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present The Retiring Mr. Hewitt, starring James Gleason. Rosalind Russell will be your hostess. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. Mm -hmm.